Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how you can get a sound effect to play inside of Unity 2022. So if I take a look at my sound folder, you can see I have a couple of versions of this footsteps sound effect, the original off Pixabay, and then I have a shortened version. The shortened version is saved as a .ogg, and the original is a .mp3. So you can see already that multiple audio types are supported, I believe .wave is as well. So if you just drag and drop your audio files into the project, they'll be there for you to use. Now, in order to actually play a sound effect, you need to have a game object with an audio source added to it. So let me go ahead and create a simple game object that will have a triggering event where we will play the audio effect. So I'm gonna right click somewhere in my scene, create an empty, and I'll just call this game object sound trigger. For add component here, I want to add a audio source. You can expand the audio source in order to set an audio clip on it. So I'm going to take the shortened version of the footsteps and add it here. So on the sound trigger object, I'm going to add a component. So search for audio source and you'll find audio source here. Audio source takes an audio clip. So to set the audio clip, just drag the sound effect from your sound folder into the audio clip slot. Now, if you're not trying to play music, you probably want to turn off play on awake. Play music could also have loop set if you want it to repeat the same music. But let's leave play on awake off and loop off as well since we're doing a triggered sound effect. So now we need to take this audio source and create a script for the sound trigger. So to go along with this audio source, we're going to also need a box collider 2D in order to set a region where when our player or a object walks on top of the sound area, it will play a certain sound effect. So I'm going to add a box collider and let's make this a bit larger than the default. So if you click edit collider, you can expand the size of this collider shape. So go ahead and make this quite large and I'll use the move tool to move this over to a region in the room where I want to play the sound effect. Also for these kind of triggering events, make sure that your box collider is set to is trigger mode. If it's not set to is trigger, then it's going to be a collision object, which means a player would bump into it not wonk on top of it for some event to trigger. So leave it set to is trigger. Now we need a new script to take advantage of these two components and then play the sound effect. So I'm going to add a new script, play sound on enter, and let's go ahead and edit the script. So inside of this script, we need to get reference to those components. So audio source, source, and then collider 2D. You could put box collider, but collider 2D is a parent collider, so it can take other types of colliders as well, like a circle collider shape. So we only need the functions from the parent class, so this will work here. And we can call this sound trigger. So let's remove the start and update methods. We probably don't need them for right now. But what we do need is to create a void on trigger enter 2D, which is going to take a collider 2D, and I'll call it collider here. So when you have a Collider 2D shape added to your game object, this function will automatically be called when a object walks on top of the game object, which can successfully cause a trigger collision with this object. So when you have a Collider 2D object, this will automatically trigger if a game object that's on a supported physics layer happens to walk into this object. So you can set up physics layers and edit project settings, and then go down to physics 2D, and then layer collision matrix. And then you can see the different layers which can interact with other layers. By default, everything's checked, which means that a game object that has its own physics body should trigger this without any exceptions. So at a basic level, what we just need to do on trigger enter 2D, and this is specifically when an object enters, not when it persists on the area, is to take the audio source, and then do dot play on the sound effect which is attached to it. Now currently we don't have reference to the source or the sound trigger. So a good way of getting that is to put a void on awake method and then do source equals get component audio source and then sound trigger equals get component collider 2D as the type. So this should be the minimum to get everything to work. So let's go over to Unity and try playing it. So let's hit play and I'll walk onto this region with my character. And there you can hear the sound effect playing automatically when we walk on. Now it doesn't keep playing over and over again while I'm on the area. And it doesn't play when I exit the area. But if I've already exited the area and I walk back onto it, then you can see that the sound effect will play again. If you wanted it to play on exit instead, you could do on trigger 
exit 2D, which is also going to take a collider 2D. And this would function pretty much exactly the same way, just it happens when an object that was on the collider trigger area leaves the area. And then you could use that to do a source.play as well. And if objects are entering the area, but you only want it to play the sound effect when the player walks on, then you can check something on the player, whether the game object has a certain type of component, or you could check for the tag on the game object. So for instance, you could do collider.gameObject.tag is equal to, let's say, player. So we want to put this in a if, and we're not assigning, we're checking. So if this is the case, then you can play the sound effect. Okay, and I need the brackets there. So let's put the source.play inside of there. So now going back to the Unity editor, I can hit play. And when my player is created in the scene, you can see its tag is player. So when I walk onto it, it's still going to play the sound effect. But let's try checking for a different tag here. Going back to the editor, hitting play and walking on. And you can see it doesn't actually trigger because the tag of the player does not match the tag we're checking for here. So there's many ways like that that you can filter which objects are going to trigger the event to play the sound effect in pretty much any place in your game where you can think to add a audio source stop play. You can just have the audio source play at that time. It doesn't necessarily need to be an on trigger event. You can even put it in a void start and then do source stop play if you wanted to, which would mean that when this game object is loaded into the scene and this class becomes active, it'll go ahead and play the sound effect like this. So I've been Chris. That's pretty much it for the basics of how to play sound effects inside of your game project. So thank you for watching to the end, and I will see you in my future Unity content.